गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन तो इन दिस प्री होली सेशन आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू लर्न स्टैटिस्टिक्स व्हिच इज एप्लीकेबल इन अवर मेडिकल लेबोरेटरी तो नाउ फर्स्ट लेट मी नो एम आई क्लियरली ऑडिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू यस आकृति प्लीज एडमिट योर सेल्फ हेलो हां यस यस सर हां एम आई क्लियरली ऑडिबल यस सर यस ओके Now tell me one thing. Now I have changed the slide. This is this change visible to you? Yes, sir. It's visible. Okay, right. Great. <laughs> See, whenever we talk about statistics, we think. we are going to discuss something which is very complicated we think we are going to discuss something which is very complicated and we are little apprehensive whether we will be able to learn these things or not see all these calculations are provided to you by your machines what you need to understand a careful interpretation a meaningful interpretation of all the data which you are generating in your lab like we talk about mean what is mean sum of all data points divided by total number of data points calculation is simple but what is the signal and this is provided to you by your machines in biochemistry and methodology but the question is what is the relevance of this mean in our laboratory see mean tells you about accuracy and what is accuracy how close our result is to true value how mean tells you about accuracy suppose manufacturer mean is 100 say for glucose and the mean which you are getting in your lab is suppose 90 that means significant number of values are away from this 100 that is why you are getting mean 90 or maybe 110 or maybe 108 so accuracy is how close our result is to true value higher the difference between the true value and your result more is the inaccuracy and this difference is called bias difference between true value and your result <clears throat> now you please write in the chat box which meaning is mean is more useful mean which you are calculating in your lab or mean which is provided to you by the manufacturer which mean is more useful okay lab mean yes akriti why lab mean is better so because it is calculated based on our uh, uh, values Usually yes we use because... the manufacturer then we create a lab mean from the uh, set point like 20 data points or 40 data points so it's better because this mean you are generating in your precision condition see yes your machine is different wear and tear of the machine is different calibration of the machine is different storage of calibrator reconstitution of calibrator quality of calibrator similarly controls similarly reagents water quality observer so many variables are there environmental conditions you are taking into consideration all these variables and you are calculating your own mean what you need to understand what you have to do your mean is not significantly different from the manufacturer mean and how we can develop objectivity in this understanding 
our mean should be within one standard deviation of the manufacturer mean and standard deviation. What I mean to say, suppose manufacturer mean is 100 and their standard deviation is 2. Our mean should be between 98 to 102. Now, suppose Dr. MGV Suhasni, please unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Su Suhasni, where are you from? I'm from Chennai, sir. Empirical Molecular Diagnostics. Which medical college? Empirical Molecular Diagnostic Labs. Sir. Achha, chika, chika, right. yes. Achha, tell me one thing. Yes, sir. Suppose first month, Many, uh, the your lab calculated lab mean is 99.7. This yes, is acceptable if target value is 100 and the yes, standard sir. mean is 2. Second yes, mean is 99.4. Third month mean is 99.2. Fourth yes, month sir. mean is 99.0. Yes, sir, because yes. it's coming uh, in I mean, the standard deviation is not more than one SD, sir. Ah, right. So that it is way, acceptable. That way, this is acceptable. Yes, sir. Is there something which is alarming or which is raising concern uh -huh. in this data? This is what I mean to say. Yes, Nimi, please unmute yourself. Huh, yeah. Yes, Nimi, please unmute yourself. Megha Rastogi, unmute yourself. Ha, Megha, is there something which is raising some concern or which is alarming? Sir, uh, regarding uh, uh, West Guard rules you are speaking about? No, no, no. I am not talking about West Guard. I am saying these are the four values. 99.7, 99.4, 99.2, 99.0. And Dr. Subhasni rightly said, all these are within one standard deviation. So all these are acceptable. Now my question is, is there something which is raising some concern? Yes, Neelam? No, I, I think this these values are fairly good enough because they all are lying within one standard deviation. <laughs> But what is happening? These are moving in one direction. Okay. Yes, yes. Right? They are one this direction. Is trend. Yes. You have to yes. notice this trend before it becomes out. Right? Yeah. And you have to take appropriate action. Why the mean is going in one direction? It should be, uh, rather it should fluctuate in both the direction. Right? Yes. So that you have to notice. This is called trend. Notice this trend and take appropriate action. Is it okay, Suhasni? Ah, yes, sir. Understood, sir. Well, good. Now, what are the uses of mean? Mean tells us about accuracy. Then, mean is used in the calculation of standard deviation. Mean is used in the calculation of coefficient of variation. Mean also tells you, or mean is used in plotting Levian Jennings chart. So now you know ki you have to calculate your own lab mean because that you are defining under your own precision condition. Now suppose you are buying controls for biochemistry. Yes, Elfie George. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Elfie George, where are you from? Sir, I'm currently working in Dubai. Okay. Yeah. To which hospital? Aster Hospital, sir. Aster, oh, there are so many yeah. Aster clinics and Aster pharmacy. Right. I did Delhi today morning only from Dubai. Okay, sir. I was in JLT. There's so many Aster pharmacy, Aster clinic, Aster hospital. Yes, sir. Everywhere Aster only. Great. Achha, tell me one thing. 
Mm. Achha, what is your specialty? Sir, I'm a clinical pathologist. Clinical pathologist. Suppose you are buying controls for glucose. Yes, sir. These controls, they have stability of six months. Okay, sir. Now, you are getting lab mean and you are saying I will calculate my own mean. Okay. You have two options. One is you are cal cal calculating your own mean and you are saying you will follow this mean for the next six months. Okay, sir. Then you have this stability of control, six months. Okay. Okay. Another, you are saying, I will, I am running controls. Every month I will calculate mean and ST. That mean and ST I will use for the subsequent month. Right? Okay. okay. Now, whatever approach you are following, document in your quality management system in that way. If you are saying I will do the first one, so yes, you are sir. fixing the mean, fixed lab mean. You are calculating Correct. your own mean, but you are fixing that. Fixing if, it for six months. If right. you are changing every month, then it is called floating lab mean or variable lab mean. Totally. Right. right, sir. So now, whatever you are using, document in that way. Generally, people say this floating is better because okay. time there is some change. So uh, you are taking into consideration all these things, but whatever you are following, document that way only. Right? Okay. And Dr. Anish, please unmute yourself. Hi, sir. Ha, Anish, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Abu Dhabi, sir. Abu Dhabi. Okay. What is your specialty? I'm a clinical pathologist, sir. You're a clinical pathologist. Now tell me one thing. What you will do in the first month? First month, you don't have your own lab mean? Sir, uh, initially, we would follow the manufacturer mean and uh, manufacturer SD. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we uh, follow the first 20 days. We calculate, uh, then we set the lab mean and then calculate our standard deviation. That, and following which, we will, we will be following the lab mean. Very good. Now... If suppose somebody says, no, I will use on the lab mean, then what they can do? Parallel, when the previous lot is finishing, parallel for the 20 days, they are running the lot which is finishing as well as new lot which they want to use, they want to use from the next month. So with that, 20 data points, they are generating their lab mean and from the first day onwards, they can use their lab mean. Is it okay, Nish? Sir, uh, but uh, can that have some fluctuation because when there is a lot change, uh, can it be that, can we have problem, can we face problem? No, no, no. Following... no. But they are calculating lab mean from the same lot only. Ah, okay, okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Ah, yeah. They are running two and different lots of control in the last 20 days. One, okay. which they are already using and next just for to calculate their lab mean and estimate. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. So, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So that, so that uh, there is no interim period without a lab mean, right, ah, sir? Yes, right. Yes, yes. Okay. What is the name of your hospital, Anish? Ahalya, Ahalya Hospital. I think you have attended our previous program also. This name yes, is... Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, I, 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 I'm following you always, sir. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So now, uh, another thing is, suppose <laughs> now we are understanding this mean is important. This mean is good, but it has certain limitations. Suppose there are three laboratories. Suppose there are three laboratories. They are running the same level of control for glucose for three days, three consecutive days. In first laboratory, their results are 99.5, and 100.5. In second laboratory, their results are 98, 100, and 102. In third laboratory, their results are 95, 100, and 105. Now you will find mean is same in all three laboratories, 100 only. 
but in first laboratory variation is hardly any in second lab laboratory variation has increased in third laboratory is tremendous variation not acceptable but mean is same so that means you are not getting this information from the mean and because there are three data points so you can easily say third laboratory variation is maximum but suppose if i give you 30 days that data of different level of controls of so many analytes then how you will decide for this you need some tool these statistical formulas are called statistical tools now look at this don't think this is something very complicated look at this figure x minus x bar difference between mean and individual data point you can imagine higher the difference between the mean and individual data point higher will be the square square of 3 is 9 square of 4 is 16 square of 5 is 25 and this capital e type structure this is called sigma this we use for sum so sum of all the square of differences will be high if the difference is more and ultimately when you are taking square root square root will be high square root of 64 is 8 square root of 36 is 6 square root of 25 is 5 that means if you interpret higher the standard deviation higher will be the difference lower the standard deviation lower will be the difference or higher standard deviation more variation low standard deviation less variation <clears throat> and less variation means increase precision and more variation means decrease precision so standard deviation tells you about variation but again it has some limitations yes gunjan agarwal please unmute yourself hello sir ha gunjan where are you from so i am currently working in bathinda punjab where uh sir dr t basin path lab okay so now gunjan tell me one thing if suppose standard deviation of uric acid is 1 hmm. okay, right sir. and standard devi and the mean value of uric acid is 5 standard deviation hmm. of sol is 10 and the mean value is 200 where the variation is more in case of cholesterol in case of uric acid uh so in case of uric acid it is approximately 20% Yes, very good. And in hmm. so that means you are dividing this standard deviation by the mean value into hundred, right? Hmm. Right, sir. This is what you are doing. Ki one by five into hundred, ten by two hundred into hundred, and hmm. because these are simple figures, so it is easy for you to calculate hmm. in your mind or on paper. But if suppose I tell you. standard deviation of uric acid is 0.7 and the mean value is 4.9 and it will be a lot more difficult so mean value is 196.2 and the standard deviation is 9.3 now it mm. is complicated right yes. so if we develop some formula whatever you have done you, you have done correctly but if we develop some formula for this what is percentage cv percent standard deviation divided by mean value into 100 so with this what you can do you can compare data of different ranges right either right. it is different level of control or it is different analytes so now you can compare different range of data with cv right right sir right sir mm -hmm. sir i actually have one doubt regarding previous slide mm -hmm. yes uh, sir in this slide uh, in the formula of for sd we have taken in the denominator n minus 1 number hmm. of uh, figures we have uh, minus 1 but while actually calculating the mean we have divided by 20 only where n is equal to 20 yes 
No, no, no. In mean, we are dividing by 20 only. In mean, when we yes, are computing x bar, it is okay. Right, right. Sir. For every, it is n minus one. It is n minus one. What happens? Okay. If right. suppose you are calculating mean from the data, uh, see, we have 20 points data and we are calculating mean from this data only. Then right. we do an, this n minus one. This is called degree of freedom. This is uh, the concept of statistics. But if suppose we are providing you mean from outside, we are saying mm -hmm. mean is 100. We have defined mean. So you have to use this mean as 100. You are not calculating from the data. Then it will be n only. Right? Right. Sir. So when mean is calculated from the data, then we use n minus 1. So in this, we are calculating mean from data. Therefore, we are using n minus 1. Okay, sir. Right. <laughs> now, why we are calculating the mean SD and CV? What is the purpose? What is the intention behind calculating this mean SD and CV? Why we want to calculate? Yes, Akriti? Uh, so, because we want to see uh, the amount of variation we are getting in the mean, whether there is any trend, whether it is a, a outside to standard deviation, then uh, it is an outlier for two times it happens, or it is outside 3SD, then it is again an outlier based on West Card. Okay, see, first tell me, where are you from? Sir, Agra, sir. Okay. okay. Now tell me why you are running control. What is the purpose of running control? So it's a check on the uh, uh, the parameters, whether they are uh, mm -hmm. running okay or not, based on all the uh, variables. Uh, so controls are basically the defined uh, uh, substances which we can use to keep a check on our daily quality. Right. See, when you are running control, you are able to detect the error before this error is reflected in the patient sample, right? Yes. Because whatever may happen to patient sample will happen to this control first. And you will take appropriate action. But right now we have mean, we have SD, we have CV. This much information is not sufficient. We need some more information. What is that? We have to plot level engineering chart. We have to apply SDR rules. So now, how these LJ charts are plotted? We draw two lines perpendicular to each other. This horizontal line intersects this vertical line at its midpoint. And at the point of intersection, we write <clears throat> mean value. Above it, 1SD, 2SD, 3SD. Below this, minus 1SD, minus 2SD, minus 3SD. Suppose mean value of glucose is 100 and standard deviation 2. At the point of intersection, we will write 100. Above this, 102, 104, 106. Below this, 98, 96, 94. And on horizontal line, we write, if suppose you are running one level control once a day, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like that. If you are running same level for twice a day, one morning, one evening, two morning, two evening, three morning, three evening, like that. For different analytes, you need to prepare different LJ charts. For different level of control, you need to prepare different LJ chart. But same level, same analyte, if you are running more frequently, then same LJ chart will be used. You don't have to prepare different LJ charts. This is for morning, this is for evening. Same level, same analyte. If you are running more frequently, same LJ chart will work. Now, suppose today the mean value, suppose that today the result is 101. You are putting a point at 101, then 100.5, then 99.5, then 100, then 101, then 99. And when these points are joined, you get a chart like this. This is called Levin-Jenning chart. 
But still, our question is not answered. How we will decide whether the result on a particular day is within acceptable limit or not? That means we need some more information in addition to this LJ chart. What is that? Some Westgard rules suggested by Dr. James Westgard in 1970s. He said, if one value is beyond three standard deviation, suppose daily your results were coming close to 100, mean value 100 or standard deviation 2, for example, if values are 900.5, 100.9.8, 100.2, and suddenly one day you're finding your result is 93. Don't you think it is alarming? What has happened? Why it is showing so much variation? Same variation is possible in our patient results. But now you have to take appropriate action. You are stopping your test, carrying out root cause analysis, after that, you are running control after appropriate action. And when this control result is within acceptable limit, you are running test, you are running control again. When this control is within acceptable limit, then you are performing test. And in the calculation of your monthly mean and ST, don't use this rejected value. Use only value which you are accepting. If you will use this one three yes, it is only guiding you. There is significant variation. If you will use this, it will widen your standard deviation. Next month, you may accept some value which should have been rejected. Suppose one day, your result is beyond two standard deviation. One to us. For once, you can accept this. If it is less than three standard deviation, but be careful in the next cycle. You suppose again it is showing variation more than two standard deviation. That means something has happened, although it has not crossed three standard deviation, but something has happened which is showing multiple times some unusual variation, which variation which you were not finding otherwise in your day-to-day -day analysis. Stop testing. Do the root cause analysis. Take appropriate action. And reject both values from the calculation of your monthly mean and SD. Because same thing will happen if you are using in the monthly calculation of mean and SD. It may widen your standard deviation. So there are many rules. We will discuss those when we will discuss our interpretation of IQC. Here, we are sensitizing you. This is mean, this is SD, this is CV. So that when we will discuss that again, you already have some knowledge related to statistics, some knowledge related to this Westgard rules. But these rules are not applicable in your equals. Equals sample, you are running only once. And remember one thing, this statistics is applicable only to quantitative data, not to qualitative. And LJ chart, Westgard rules, these are applicable only to IQC. These require multiple data points. In EQAS, you have only one data point. So you cannot plot any LJ chart or Z score. In any LJ chart, you cannot apply Westgard rules. For this, we use Z score, it is also known as SDI, Standard Deviation Index. <laughs> if it is minus two to plus two, this is acceptable. Variation is within acceptable limit as compared to a peer group. If it is two to three or minus two to minus three, it is warning signal. If it is less than minus three or more than three. This is action signal. One action signal or two consecutive warning signal indicates intervention. You have to see why I am finding so much variation. 
how the z score is calculated assigned value means group mean or by some other way a value is assigned to a, this sample of a class by the pt provider as per the guidelines of new standard iso 15189 2022 you have to discuss with the equas provider you have to tell them you please provide us the detail how you are assigning a value to a particular light in equas sample whether it is group mean or it is value of some reference lab or is when mean of some selected group of laboratories or it is the value of some reference material how you are assigning value now this is a requirement So now, how that score is calculated? Most of the time, people follow group mean, lab result minus group mean divided by standard deviation. This is not the standard deviation which you are calculating from your IQC. It is the standard deviation provided to you by the equas providers. So assigned value and standard deviation it is available in the equas report. lab result you were providing to them then they calculate your z score and tell you whether your z score is within acceptable limit or not you have to take action appropriately right so some more details interpretation how to take action on this equas outlier that we will be discussing in our in detail equas interpretation okay so it was discussion in brief about statistics so now if you want to ask something you please switch on your video Anji Neeram ji want to ask something ha yes sir uh, so um, on 24th of february i changed the lot uh, the level 2 lot hmm. uh, control and uh, since then i have been observing daily flags in uh, alt and est uh, although the level 1 which i am using previously also it's showing absolutely correct results Mm. daily i am getting flags and then uh, i rerun the control then i calibrate it then rerun i mean this is a cycle which i am which is happening every day what should i do should i wait for 20 points and then calculate my lab mean and uh, no, standard deviation and then it is happening in on analyte and all analytes or some selected group of analytes it is happening mainly in alt ast daily and occasionally in total protein um and total calcium that has happened only once but alt and ast it's happening daily in level 2 level 1 is all right and i have changed the so level how much level. how much variation you are getting and uh, what i mean to say we have to interpret this data very carefully now suppose your uh, it is uh, in relation to normal level of control yes your Uh, manufacture mean is suppose thirty five to thirty eight, right? And standard deviation is suppose one. Okay. A one, so that means two standard deviation means two. Yes. Thirty five to thirty eight. If it is suppose that means it if it is going less than thirty three, or more than forty, it will show you flag. Yes. है ना? It is first. It is one to a situation. or otherwise it is if it is happening again two to a situation or if it is less than 32 or more than 41 mm -hmm. then it is one three a situation they have to take action sir, immediately sir why are you mentioning 35 to 38 like i uh, saw the no, i am giving you example i am giving you example don't okay. go by these value understand okay. the concept 
So the normally when we take out the uh, manufacturer mean values, like I followed the display unity uh, report because I'm using the machine uh, Minray BS240 Pro and the reagents also of Minray, which are not normally uh, present in uh, the display unity report. So I followed the method uh, chart, which was told to me by the- This uh, bio that people here, they are confusing the people. Ki they, so, we are following method, we are following peer, that has no value. No, but then there is no other way. How do I find no, no, no. out? No, no, no. First, you understand the concept. First, you understand the concept. Okay. See, what I mean to say, what is the meaning of 1, 3, S? What is the meaning of 1, 2, S? That you have to understand. What I am saying, uh, I was giving one example. Suppose it is 35 to 38 and standard deviation is 1. So mm -hmm. if it is less than 32, so that means it is beyond 1, 3, S. Or if it is more than 41, it is beyond 3 years. But yes. clinically, these values are not significant. Yes. If suppose whether the uh, SGPT is 35 or 31, it hardly makes a difference. Or it is 38 or 42, that hardly makes a difference. That is not clinically significant. Yes. Now, what I am saying, if suppose for one level control, it is okay. For second level control, if it is showing only this much variation, mm -hmm. so you can discuss with your company people. Okay. What is the reason why their analyzer is showing uh, for these parameters this variation? Okay. And what is happening with other users who are using the same machine? Okay. How they are settling down this situation, maybe some reconstitution problem. If it is reconstituted, it is not reconstituted under defined condition. Because if no one else is facing that problem, only you are facing on that machine, same quality of reagent, same quality of control. So what is the reason? So when you will analyze, then you will get the answer and that will be rectified. Because there is no fixed way of dealing with this control outliers. Yeah. You have to see from your laboratory perspective what you are getting and how this can be resolved. Okay. Right? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Anyone else? Uh, yes, sir. I have a few queries actually. Uh, okay. First thing I wanted to ask when we have just two data points like we are uh, doing in case of ILC or in Delta check or retained sample recheck. We have just one other uh, data point to compare our value with. In that case, how do we decide how much variation is significant? No, one thing is you're in one thing you're saying in ILC. In okay. ILC, yes, sir. Let's, let's take the example of ILC because we have just one data point and we cannot apply these statistical. And definitely, tools. Uh, what is the what was your second? Uh, Second is uh, delta check and retained sample rerun data. Retained sample. Okay. Yes. See, for delta check, there is no clear cut guidelines. What is the purpose of carrying out delta check? Why you want to do delta check? Firstly, it is for, you know, comparing our own uh, patient's report from yesterday's status and today's status. Yeah. So Main purpose we want to see whatever result you had previously, today result is not significantly different from that. If it is significantly different, what has happened to patient? You want to know. If suppose blood urea of a patient was 232 yesterday and today it mm. is coming 34. So now this is not acceptable. And when you are asking and they are saying hey, this patient has received dialysis yesterday, then you are mm -hmm. thinking oh, this is possible. Right. This is the purpose of Delta check. Now right. suppose previous day blood urea was 34. Mm -hmm. Today it is coming 37 or mm -hmm. 31 or 30. So mm -hmm. there is no need of any acceptable limit. It is comparable. Okay. Clinically, it is not different from the previous day. If suppose 
in this delta check you have to use your clinical experience suppose hemoglobin was 12.8 yesterday mm -hmm. and today if it is 13.0 or 13.1 or 12.5 or 12.6 it is okay but suppose mm -hmm. hemoglobin is today 15.0 mm -hmm. or 8.7 or 9.2 if it is 15.0 then you have to assess you have to ask from the doctor is this patient dehydrated because you want to see is there any hemo concentration or not if it is 9.2 8.7 ki right. whether there is any history of any bleeding from any site or somebody has collected blood from the iv site only to some hemo dilution so that mm. way you have to settle delta check uh, point if it is related to retained sample now in mm. retained sample you are checking sample stability integrity yes. then suppose you are running today and then you are running the same sample tomorrow tomorrow or you have analyzed yesterday and you are now you are running today to so whatever variation you are getting note down that this exercise you are doing almost daily or once in a week whatever way you are carrying out so you mm -hmm. generate 20 data points when okay. you are generating 20 data points of the difference then you mm -hmm. calculate mean difference and sd suppose it is hemoglobin today it is 12.8 tomorrow it may be 12.6 or it may be 13.0 mm -hmm. what is the difference 0.2 Now forget about minus or plus. Difference is point two. Sometimes it is yes. zero, sometimes point one, sometimes point three. Now calculate sum of all these differences divided mm -hmm. by the number of data points. You will get mean mean variation. Then also calculate standard deviation of the difference. Mean plus two SD, that mm. is the highest variation you will accept in your lab. Suppose mean is point two, and standard deviation is point zero five. Yeah, point one. Suppose it is point one. Mm. Now you are saying mm. I will mm. accept point two plus point two. That is point four. If today it is twelve point eight, my ninety five variation will cover. 12.4 to 13.2, because 2 SD covers 95.5 percent data point. This is mentioned in your Park and Park PSM book. Okay. Mm -hmm. so that way, you are defining under uh, defining your own acceptability criteria based on your lab's own precision condition. Own data, right? Sir. This is related to retained sample. Now, for ILC also. You have to use your clinical sense. Ki how much variation is acceptable? Most of the time, what happens for these ILC for quantitative parameters? We have equas. We participate in equas only. For some qualitative parameter, formal equas is not available. We are participating in ILC. So whatever other laboratories say, if their result is positive, or our result also should be positive, if their result is negative, also, right. so should be negative. So, so quantitative is a lot easier hmm. for qualitative. Sorry, so but for quantitative, I just don't know how much difference no. should I see it, in this. Yeah. In this, you have to see with your experience that how much you are accepting. See if they are saying their cholesterol is two hundred, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the people say the difference should not be more than ten percent. If suppose their result is two hundred and your result is fifty-six, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that means you have to take some action. Why your result is so low? You cannot say my result also may be correct because who has selected that referral laboratory? You have selected, so you have to believe in their result. Right, sir. Right, sir. But there are no guidelines regarding how much difference no should be. No guidelines. Okay, sir. 
Uh, sir, uh, my next question was uh, how many and how to what extent should we apply Westcott rules in case of dry chemistry? Because in that case, the mean that fluctuation variation is very low and LD limits that we get in our lab, those are actually very low, very narrow limits. See, so in is this practically possible? Do, whatever manufacturer is recommending, hmm, hmm. suppose manufacturer for glucose is saying, he, our mean value is 100 and standard deviation is 2. This is what mm -hmm. they are recommending. And now suppose you are getting in your lab standard deviation 0. 0.3. Right. right. So now if you are considering this 0. 0.3, 0. 0.3 means for two standard deviation, your result will fluctuate between 94.6 to 99.4. 0.4 to 100.6, right? Right, right. Even if there is difference of only one, it will become outlier. Right, sir. So now what you can do, and that is not clinically significant, unnecessary waste mm -hmm. is not so if you are trying right. to adjust that. So mm -hmm. you are conducting a meeting, in that meeting you are deciding, manufacturer is recommending a variation of two. And in our laboratory, we are getting very high degree of precision. To follow mm -hmm. that precision is not clinically relevant. So in our laboratory, we will follow mean whatever we are getting, that we will follow, that hardly makes any difference. And standard deviation we will follow. Somewhere in between, you can set based uh, with your documented clinical meeting, we will follow this, which is definitely okay. not more than Manufacturer standard manufacturers or somewhere in between. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. And sir, one last question I have uh, is that while calculating the lab mean, how much deviation from manufacturer mean can we uh, accept? How one much standard, deviation from one manufacturer? Standard deviation, one standard deviation. One is one is D from manufacturers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Yes. Any other question? Okay, so now if there is no more question, the so next session will be on 12th of April and this session will be on interpretation of IQC and ICWAS. Right? So I'm ending this session here and from April onwards, we are, start, we are starting a new series of lectures also. So if you want to join in that, so we will post schedule of those lectures in this group only, WhatsApp group, which we have created. So in this, we have kept very small lectures. Uh, you also don't have to spend so much time So small lectures, but meaningful. So you will get new lecture schedule. And if you think, some more lectures, some more topics which are also of interest, so we can start a new series from 1st July after that. So you please suggest us some more topics. Thank you.